Welcome back to the Donaldson Cross Country Championship, and we're on board with Yangon's Jacques and Lazelle, more members of the famous Fantonda Racing Clan, who were courageous enough to take up the challenge of day two of the RFS 400. Competing in their debut race, they impressed all with their perseverance, and they managed to achieve their goal. Die feit dat ons net hier gekom het, is net genade. Ons het laarig gesikkel, um, ons het baie teens bekaard, maar um, ons het daar nie uitgekom. So, net om klaar te maak, is so relief. So, ja, dit voel goed. <laughs> ja, ek denk, is redelijk um, werk in kar. Die reverse werk nie meer nie, die klatsch werk nie meer. <laughs> maar stier wil ons los. <laughs> maar ek weet nie, jy weet nie of jy moet uitzwaai vir die klip of vir die dasies nie, want ons dasies en klip vir oorhal. So, ek weet nie wat doen die mense nie. <laughs> On to Class A and all eyes were on the Quazilla Natal pair of Clint Gibson and Gary Campbell in their dirt sport porter. The men started from pole, which was a massive achievement given that their racetrack broke down en route to Tolton. They continued from where they left off from the prologue and dominated the field. While Gibson already has a national winter's name, the team was looking for their first triumph together. Reigning champs Evan Hutchison and Danny Stassen in their motorite racing bat produced arguably the drive of the day, finishing second after starting from 16th, while Lance Trithui and Wichman overcame a malfunctioning clutch throughout the weekend to finish third. Brooks and Gray experienced an overeating gearbox in their Ducatus bat, but otherwise enjoyed a good run. And the father and son pair of Nick and Ryan Harp had trouble in their motorite racing bat, a punch and persistent misfire slowing down their race. Newcomers, Philip de Vries and Johan Fulun were delighted with their performance in their maiden outing, finishing sick despite describing the experience as very rough, while Ruth van and Pinar had electrical problems in their Rubicon racing bat. Another Gibson, Glenn, as well as Clint Brook, captured an eighth place finish in their dirt sport bat. While driving in a brand new bat Venom, Quinton and Kali Silvalt had gearbox problems and described the dust on the second loop as almost impossible but they still reached the flag. Marius and Yolinda Faree picked up a flat in their PHB bat, while they also weren't impressed with Hutchinson hitting them from behind. Heath de Toy and Luke Boerte had major issues throughout the weekend, with their tyre coming off on both days. Despite it all, they said they had a great time out. It wasn't quite the same for Hermann and Vickard Silvalt, who failed to finish the race in their brand new Cobalt Striker. It was the same story for Mobile and Niemand. We got stuck along the, the way. We had alternator problems that we couldn't actually fix. We were eighth. We started eighth in class and we had gained two positions. So was, we were going well. We could have done very well, I assume. Neil Mayer and Joseph Lewis' race ended when they tried to pass Gibson. That hit a rock which broke off the front hub. There were also problems for brothers Daniel and Lozili who fell out in their Max's tyres porter. Mark Corbett and Rudy Belzer from Century Property picked up two punctures along the way, but otherwise said they enjoyed their car, despite being unable to finish. The Ogazi brothers had a weekend to forget, gearbox failures forcing them to retire during loop one. There were no such problems for Gibson and Campbell, who led from start to finish to capture their first national championship win together, doing so in the dirt sport quarter. I was points in his confidence, eh? Um, it, 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 it boosts the whole team. So, I mean, the guys are going to work harder and obviously prep the car even better if they can. Um, and, uh, you know, that's half the race is one in the workshop, like they say, which is, I believe, even a little bit more. But yeah, no, we've inspired, we've, we've got uh, a lot of confidence now, so we'll, we'll go to the next race, obviously, obviously hopefully with a, with a, with a good team and a good, a good car. The pair collecting the 25 points, while Hutchison and Stassen's superb drive saw them finish second, with Trithui and Wichman coming in third. Let's catch up with Hammond Silvalt, who's showing off his new toy. Now, car from last year and this this year, 
there's quite a bit of a weight difference. Our car last year was a bit heavy. Um, we also using a, 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 the same type of motor, but a different uh, variation of it with a stroker motor like all the other Oaks are using now. More torque, There's definitely more torque. There's more power out of the corners. And then the main thing is, is traction to get, to get that power on the ground. So uh, we really thought of it. We, we've made some changes to the, to the rear swing arms. We've changed the angles on the, on the shock absorbers. We've changed the shocks. There's a little, a little bit of homework on that. And, and Richard actually helped me quite a lot with that, looking after the mathematical side of the shocks. And, and there is really an advantage with these type of shocks. And uh, well, we, that's, that's my opinion in, in the last two days of it. And uh, well, so far so good. The handling in the corners makes it actually a little bit easier. I must, I must be honest. The car, this car, there's less fight in it to get it around the tight corner. It's, it's, it feels much better in the tight stuff. Um, we, are, we also opted for smaller front wheels than the other cars. So far, it works for us, and it's, it's everything is lighter in the front. The, the, the direction change of the car is, is quicker. That's that's what what it feel feel like. So uh, we we. Uh, I think we're on the right on the right path. The professionalism of the South African off-road races is, is becoming it's become more difficult to win. So you need to be on the ball 100% with the right equipment, and I think that is that is what we've tried, and, and I think we have achieved quite a lot of what we thought we would achieve. The weekend's not just about the racing; it's also about showcasing the Donaldson Cross Country Championship. This was on a completely different level. It was, it was incredible. Let's, let's go, I want to go again. I'm going again. I can't demonstrate say, black. That is rare, but it's something else. It's something else that you have to do, but it's very lekker. It's very lekker. Man, what an experience. Really, really amazing, amazing experience. I've driven lots of cars on track, and from karting to two weeks ago, GTR around Kailami, but this is, this is a different experience. Moving to Class P, and Swaziland driver John Thompson and Maurice Matten pulled off the surprise win, and there's Zarko Magnum. Reigning champions Colin Matthews and Alan Smith experienced some trouble in their Century Property CR3, even losing their brakes at one stage. Their fortunes improved in Loop 2. While they tested the front runners of Thomas and Zamatten, they also came under threat late in the race by the ace girl Jeremy Woods and Chris Davies. The brothers-in-law from Superpave put up a good fight to finish third. Fourth was another Zarko. This time driven by the father and daughter team of Kutsia and Sandra Lavaskakni. They didn't have things all their own way. Brake caliper broke off. Check. So now uh, we blocked the, the brake line and we're going to try and continue. Keith Makanete and Peter Klutwa handled their Zarko well. The pair finishing a respectable fifth. Nicholas Gosler and Andrew Massey from Men's Health went on to finish just behind them in sixth spot. John Telford and Jaco Swart, well, it wasn't a great day for them. They were unable to finish. And it was the same story for veteran Ernest Corbett and his co-driver Stefan Engelbrecht from Century Property Racing. Great day out for Thompson and Zamatin, who claimed the win, while Matthews and Smith and Wooden Davies rounded off the podium. 